Welcome back to Awesome Possum Hosmer Geese of Games. I'm Chris, and we got another TCG player mail day. Let's see what I got. So here I am with my latest order from my TCG player direct. Let's check out and see what's in the bag and uh, see what I'm working on now. So remember one of the best things about working with TCG player direct is that it shows you all of the uh, purchases where they came from the individual members of TCG player. Uh, the ones that pay for their service to be able to have TCG player actually pay um, go through and collate all their cards and then pull from individual pull piles. Uh, like this one's just, it's, it's fantastic. It's highly organized by like the, the, the quantities from each retailer with how much money goes to each one. And then on top of that, you know, you don't really care about the bins of, of what's going to be for it, but it has complete description, including the set name of the cards that are uh, that they're going through when purchasing. I think this amount of detail is great, especially when you're going through and you have to go through and go through. Like this one is you know, 55 cards. 55 cards is a lot of cards to have to go through and to, to make sure it's correct. Uh, when I the one thing that really bothers me when I'm ordering on eBay or some of the other retailers including some of the TCG player orders that are not direct is when they don't include a packing list. The packing list is fantastic. Um, I'm buying cards, you know, sometimes I buy from 14, 15 different retailers at the same time and it really bothers me when I'm like I'm buying a place that sometimes I buy one, sometimes I buy two, sometimes I buy three from uh, different uh, retailers and it's hard for me to go through okay, who is this from? Sometimes when you go through and get a, a letter from somebody, it doesn't have any extra paperwork on it and it doesn't have any labels or seals or uh, like who, who it was from. So I have to go, it takes me a long time to go through and collate and to make sure that I'm getting it from the right people. I know that uh, most people out there are not buying cards like I do. I am, uh, you know, um, uh, I'm not only, I don't believe in printing my own cards. I'm not a proxy person. I believe in, you know, spend the extra 15, 34, a buck 49 for a card. And sometimes it's going to be a little bit more expensive than that. But you know, when you're going through and build a deck, $200 for a CCG deck is nothing these days. And, and it's always been kind of a, a nothing deal. I know some people it's a lot of money, but at the same time, it is part of the game. If, it, if it's too much money, there's many other games that it might be better for you that uh, I know I'm going to get some hate mail about that. <laughs> um, but there are a ton of games out there. I know you may enjoy this game, but don't, you know, proxying is stealing from from the people who produce it and games manufa manufacturers and game designers are people too. So let's go ahead and get into the, the individual carts. I'm not going to... Just gonna go through an order and see if uh, they're all here. Deep Root Waters. For one blue, two colorless enchantment, whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, create a 1 1 blue Merfolk creature token with Hexproof. That card's fantastic in um, a Merfolk deck. I wonder what I'm gonna be uh, working on later. So, uh, trying to finish off that Merfolk deck. Distant Melody, one blue, three colorless sorcery, choose a creature type, draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. Hey, Merfolk. Hey, Wizards. There we go. Melinda's Herophant. Um, Herophant. Uh, one white, two colorless uh, vampire cleric, one, one flying. Whenever you gain life, you put a one plus one plus one counter on Elodin's Herophant. Whenever this card dies, create X one one white vampire creature tokens with a lifelink with uh, where X is its power. Uh, might go into the vampire deck. We'll see. Illusionist Gambit. Two blue, two colorless instant cast a spell only during the declare blocker step on an opponent's turn. So it's either on the person you're attacking or when someone else is attacking. And it's not your turn. So it could be on when someone's attacking you. Remove all attacking creatures from combat and then tap them. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Each of those creatures attacks that combat, if able, they can attack you or planeswalkers who control that combat. So it kind of goads them on your turn for another attack or on an opponent's turn on another attack, which is kind of be kind of interesting. Uh, Netlings, Nuisance, uh, one black, two colorless 
For a 3-1 Fairy Rogue, flying whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, that player creates a 4-2 red pirate creature token with this creature can't block, this creature is goaded for the rest of the game. So it can't attack you, but it can be sacrificed. So that's always a, a possibility. Nightmare Unmaking, two black, three colorless, choose one XL, each creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand, or you can exile each creature with power less than the number of cards in your hand. So if you have zero, you get to exile everything. I have a few of those because, yeah, they're black. Perplexing test. Two blue, three colorless, instant, choose one. Return all creature tokens to their owner's hands. Or return all known token creatures to their owner's hands. It's an instant. It's fun. My Morphulk deck wants it. Fiend Hunter. Two white, one colorless creature, human. Uh, with one three, when Fiend Hunter enters the battlefield, you may exile another target creature. When a Fiend Hunter leaves the battlefield, return exile creature card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Yes, ETB effect in the house. Liliana's talent for two black. It's an enchantment aura, enchant Planeswalker. Enchant Planeswalker has minus eight. Put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Whenever a player deals damage to an enchanted planeswalker, destroy that creature. Pretty fun. Teferi's Talent. Another talent card. Two blue, three colorless. Enchanted planeswalker. Enchanted planeswalker has minus 12 planeswalker points uh, or loyalty. You get an emblem with you may activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control on any player's turn anytime you can cast an instant. When you... Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Enchanted Planeswalker. That's so good. If you get to that 12, well, just by drawing a bunch of cards, it can be a big time. Big, big, big time. Uh, Volpine Harvester, one white, three colorless. Phyrexian Fox, three, three. Whenever one or more Phyrexians you control attack, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield if its mana value is less than or equal to their power. Hey, that's one of those cards I've already ordered once and I didn't mean to order again. Another one, Glimmering Lens. One white, one colorless, four Meriden. Whenever equip creature and at least one other creature uh, attack, draw a card. Equip is one white, one colorless. Goldworn's Gambit. Two red, six colorless, affinity for equipment. Create five, two, two red rebel tokens. They gain haste until end of turn. For each of those uh, tokens, you may attach equipment cards you control to them. Fun. Tangle Weave Armor. Two green, two colorless living weapon. Equipped creature gets my plus X plus X, where X is the greatest mana value among your commanders. So if you have just happen to say something like the Ur Dragon, where the cost is you know, nine or greater, it's going to be huge. Warm Quake. Two, gra two green, four colorless sorcery. Corrupted. Create an XX. Green friction, worm, creature token, and trample and toxic one where X is the number of mana spent to cast a spell. Then for each opponent with three or more poison counters, you create another one of those tokens. It has flashbacks of 10. Cataract Soul Ken uh, Kendler. One white, one red, two colorless, legendary creature, dwarf, wizard, four, three. The legend rule does not apply to tokens you control. Whenever another non-token... A uh, legendary permanent enters the battlefield under your control. You may pay one colorless. If you do, create a token as a copy of it. That creature token create uh, gets uh, haste. And sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end stack. Contractual safeguard. One white, two colorless addendum. If you cast a spell during your main combat phase, put a shield counter on a creature you control. Choose a kind of counter a creature uh, on a creature you control. Put a counter of that kind on each other creature you control. Going in my attracts a deck. Families favor one. Green two colorless. Whenever you attack, put a shield counter on target attacking creature until end of turn. It gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player. Remove a shield counter from it and you get to draw a card. Uh, Gaiji. Honored one, one white, one green, one red, two colorless, beast, four, four, legendary creature. Uh, when a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalker and opponent controls, that creature gets plus two, plus zero. I think I want to use that to build around for my token deck. It gets out of control real fast. Industrial investment. I just bought one of these the other day. 
Mm. One red, three colorless enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, look at the top X cards of your library where X is, is that creature's mana value. You may put a creature card from among them on the battlefield. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Manifest token. Yes, I need another manifest token just because it's easier to play that way. Mary, the, the Killing Quill. Two black, one colorless, legendary creature, vampire, assassin. Whenever you, a creature an opponent controls dies, exile it with a hit counter on it. Assassins, mercenaries, and rogues you control have death touch. And whenever the creature deals combat damage to a player, you may remove a hit counter from a card. You may uh, uh, you may remove a hit counter from a card you, uh, that player owns in exile. If you do, draw a card and then create two treasure tokens. Interesting. Uh, Oscar, Rubbish Reclaimer, one blue, one black, three colorless, legendary creature, human wizard. This spell costs one less to cost for each different mana value among cards in your graveyard. Whenever you discard a non-land uh, non card, you may cast it from your graveyard. Rexel of the Risen Deep, one black, two colorless, uh, two Two blue, three colorless, legendary creature, Kraken, Island Walk, Swamp Walk, five, eight. Whenever uh, this card deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target instant or sorcerer card from that player's graveyard without paying his mana cost. If the spell would be put in a graveyard from anywhere this turn, exile it instead. Full art, arcane signet. Yes, I love me my full art cards. Boon of the Spirit Realm, two, two white, three colorless, enchantment. Uh, Constellation, whenever Boon of the Spirit Realm or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a Blessing Counter on Boon of the Spirit Realm. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each Blessing Counter on Boon of uh, the Spirit Realm. Titan of Litajara, two blue, four colorless creature illusion, six, six. When it uh, enters the battlefield, you get to choose a creature type. It's important. Um, and then this card uh, has that, the chosen type in addition to his other types. Whenever this card enters the battlefield or attacks, you may draw a card for each other creature you control that shares its creature type with it. If you do, discard a card. You get that. Go through your draw through your deck pretty fast that way. Alien Rhino. It is a a different type of creature token. Yes, I, I like making sure I have lots of different. Creature tokens, including an alien warder, uh, warrior. There's a copy, and then Osgood operator, operator double creature token, and then a different kind of human token. It's a one one with ward two from the timing, timely Wibley set, and a fish, a big big fish. Next card, interesting looking card, bio transference. Two black, two colorless enchantment creatures you control art artifacts in addition to their other types. The same is true for. Creature spells uh, you control and creature spells you own that aren't on the battlefield. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you lose one life and create a 2-2 black Necron Warrior artifact creature token. I am putting that in my um, Artifact Matters deck. The, their name is Death. Three black, three colorless sorcery. Destroy all non-artifact creatures. Yep, Artifact Matters decks. It's hot stuff. Another card from a universe beyond a uh, secret layer. This one is Ryu from Street Fighter World Warrior. One white, two colorless, legendary creature, human warrior training. Whenever this creature attacks, another creature with greater power, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Hadouken! One red, four colorless. Untap him, discard a card. Ryu uh, deals damage equal to his power to any creature. If excess damage is dealt this way, you can draw a card. Good way to cycle through your deck a little bit. Spine of Isha, seven cost artifact. When spine uh, enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. When the spine is put into a graveyard from battlefield, return it to your the owner's hand. Interesting. Spiteful Repossession. One red, four colorless sorcery. Spiteful Repossession deals damage to each opponent who controls more lands than, than you equal to the difference. Then create a number of treasure tokens equal to the damage dealt this way. So if you got three opponents, you can do a lot of damage if you only have four or five lands in play and they have 10. You got a lot of treasure tokens. Treasure tokens matter. 
Last night together, one green, one red, three colorless sorcery. Choose tar two target creatures, untap them. Put two plus one plus one counters on each of them. They gain vigilance, indestructible, and haste until end of turn. After the main phase, there is an additional combat phase. Only the chosen creatures can attack during that combat phase. Yes, it's all about some heavy hitters. Going in and making some beats. Next card is Wear and Tear. This one is a Fuse card. So you can cast both of them by paying both of the, the cost at the same time. Urza's Funhouse. Yes, I bought Urza's Funhouse from one of the unsets. I bought this for my um, Eldrazi deck because it is legal in lots of those formats. So this one taps to produce a, oh, a colorless mana or taps to produce infinite mana. Activate only if you have Urza's Mine and Urza's Power Plant and Urza's Hell Room Plant. Odds if you have those, not very good, but you know. Or you can pay seven and tap it. Head to askurza.com and click on Urza's Funhouse to have something crazy happen. Next one is Shorekii, uh Genesis Engine for one blue, one colorless, or uh, one uh, white and two colorless legendary artifact vehicle, and it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. You pay one, draw two cards, then discard a card, create a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot token, creature token with this creature uh, the, uh, cruise vehicles as if it has power two or greater, or two greater. So it, do a crew for three instead. So you just need three of those, and it could be your commander. Hey, look at that sliver grave mother. I am working on a sliver deck. It's going to take a while to finish because of those pesky little lands. One of each of the colors of mana: red, white, blue, black, and. Green, you get a 6-6 six, six legendary creature sliver. And sliver, the legendary rule does not apply to slivers you control. Each sliver creature card in your graveyard has Encore X, where X is its amount of value. Encore 5. And you can pay the, you know, Encore is exile the card from your graveyard. For each opponent, create a token that attacks the opponent this turn. They gain haste, sacrifice them at the beginning of your next uh, end step, and then activate only as a sorcery. Next one is an alien angel token. The other side is an alien warrior. Delete! Sorcery, two red X colorless. Delete deals X damage to each non-artifact creature and each player. Fun for my artifact deck. Yes, I had to get an extra one just in case. Lunar Hatchling for one blue, one green, four colorless, six, six flying trample. Basic land cycling, so you can discard it for two to go get any basic land in your deck. Escape. For six, exile a land you control. Exile five other cards from your graveyard to be able to bring it in a six-six flying trample. Here's the Asgood Operation Double, which is the actual card, not the token. For two blue, two colorless, when you cast a spell, create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary, and then taps to produce a colorless mana. Spend this mana only to cast an artifact spell or activate an ability of an artifact. Paradox, when you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you get to investigate, so you get to create a clue token. River Song Diary, I think this card is probably much better than it actually is. I have had a lot of fun uh, the one time I've got to play it, I've had it played against me a couple times, and it was brutal. For three colorless mana, it's an artifact imprint. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell from their hand, exile it instead of putting it into the graveyard as it resolves. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four more cards, exile River Song's Diary, choose one of them at random. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So good. Start the TARDIS. One blue, one colorless sorcery. Surveil two. Then draw a card and you may planeswalk. So that planeswalk part only matters if you're playing with the actual plane chase cards. Jumpstart. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying this mana cost. Then exile the card. Truth or consequences for one red, one blue, two colorless sorcery, secret council. Each player secretly votes for truth or consequences, then those votes are revealed. You draw cards equal to the number of truth votes, and then choose an opponent at random. Truth or consequences deal three damage to that player for each consequence vote. Can be brutal. Wrecked and rebuild. One green, one red, one colorless. Choose one, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. 
or mill five cards, then you put a land card from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped, and you can pay a flashback cost of five to play it again from your graveyard. Well, that is this week's direct order from TCG Player. Hope you all enjoyed these cards. I have a lot of cards from Doctor Who, a lot of cards from the Commander set, a lot of cards from various Commander expansions for basic standard sets. So, hope you all enjoyed this. If you have any questions about any of the cards I, I ordered, um, I'm going to be starting a, a new series here for my Commander deck, so I can go through them one at a time. Those things take a little bit longer to make. Uh, if you have any requests for Commander knowledge, please let me know. I'm happy to help out. I've been playing Commander now since e the early, early EDH days when we were just playing it out of bars, playing it as a beer and pretzels game, and it was a ton of fun. So, until next time, I hope you guys have fun, and keep them rolling. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to stay updated. Have a great day, and keep them rolling.